This is a magnet levitating above a crystal of bismuth, but it shouldn't be doing this. Bismuth has the strongest natural ability to repel a magnet on Earth, but according to its atomic structure, it should be attracted to the magnet, not repel it. So then how is it levitating right before our eyes? This answer required 80 years of research combining special relativity and quantum mechanics to fully understand. Today I'm going to show you how things that we don't typically think of as magnets are actually tiny magnets, and how we can use this knowledge to make room temperature levitation without superconductors. Let's start with a material you may have seen before, pyrolytic graphite. It can levitate above magnets because the repelling force is strong enough to counteract gravity. Look, it can even hold stuff up if I put some styrofoam on it. Look how cool this looks on a big sheet of magnets. But take it away from the magnets and it has no magnetic properties at all. So it's magnetic, but not in the way that we usually think of. This type of magnetism is called diamagnetism, and it's the same effect that caused the magnet to levitate on the bismuth crystals that I showed you. In fact, diamagnetism is the most common type of magnetism. Every material on Earth has it, even water. If I bring a strong magnet near this vial of water, you can see it gets pushed away. A different way to see this effect is by placing a magnet underneath a container of water and watching its surface. Okay, so I'm just going to pour some water on here. There's a slight lip on here to hold the water in. Okay, so we have the light on the ceiling reflecting off of the water here. And the magnet below it is well below this acrylic piece that the water is on. Now watch the reflection of light as I push the magnet towards it. The magnet deforms the water surface, pushing it away. This isn't the magnet touching the water, it's purely the interaction of the magnetic field with the water molecules. This is so cool. So if everyday materials like water, wood, are repelled by magnets, what's causing this behavior? To answer that, we have to understand what causes a magnetic field in the first place. Since 1820, scientists have known that when you move a charged particle, like electrons flowing through this wire here, it generates a magnetic field. This means that electric and magnetic fields are really two perspectives of the same force, which we unify into one force called the electromagnetic force. So any moving charge creates a magnetic field, even a single electron. That means every electron orbiting a nucleus is generating a tiny magnetic field. This is called the orbital magnetic field. But electrons have another more mysterious property as well called spin, which isn't actually any physical spinning motion, but rather it's an intrinsic angular momentum that exists as part of the electron itself. This spin also creates a tiny magnetic field called the intrinsic magnetic moment. So electrons can have spin up or spin down, meaning their magnetic field can point up or down. This is separate from their orbital magnetic moment. So orbiting electrons have their orbital magnetic moment, which makes a magnet, and also the electron itself is also a tiny magnet. So if electrons are all tiny moving magnets, why isn't everything around us magnetic? Because we're all made up of electrons. The answer to this lies in how electrons fill orbitals. Electrons don't just fill orbitals randomly, they fill them in a way that minimizes their orbital angular momentum. If I add one electron with a positive angular momentum and spin up, the next electron must have negative angular momentum and be spinned down. Their momenta cancel out, meaning there's no net orbital motion of charges, and their spins cancel as well, so there's no net magnetic field. This is why atoms with completely filled orbitals have no net magnetic field. However, even though there's no net magnetism, the individual electron orbitals still act like tiny magnets. If you put such an atom in an external magnetic field, it pushes on the orbiting electrons. And just like a spinning gyroscope, they start to process. 
meaning their orbits start orbiting. This precession causes a new oscillating electric field, which causes a new magnetic field. But this time the individual electron magnetic fields don't cancel out because they process in the same direction. This effect is what's called diamagnetism, and it only occurs when the material is placed in a magnetic field. Once you remove the external field, the effect disappears. But what if an atom doesn't have a completely filled orbital? In this case, the orbital magnetic moments don't cancel out, and neither do the spin magnetic moments. These materials are called paramagnetic. They contain tiny magnetic moments that align slightly when placed in an external magnetic field, making them weakly attracted to a magnet. A great example of a paramagnet is aluminum. It isn't naturally magnetic, but in a strong external field, its atoms align slightly, causing it to be attracted to a magnet. Some paramagnets can go a step further. They can keep their magnetic moments aligned even when the external field is removed. These are called ferromagnets, which are the everyday magnets you're familiar with. So here's the question. If atoms with unfilled orbitals should be paramagnetic, why is bismuth repelled instead of attracted to a magnet? Bismuth is a large atom with 83 electrons, and its outermost shell, the 6p orbital, has three unpaired electrons. These should act like tiny magnets making bismuth paramagnetic, but clearly it's behaving as a diamagnet instead, being pushed away from my magnet. This confused scientists for years, until Paul Dirac combined Einstein's special relativity with quantum mechanics. Einstein's special relativity tells us that when particles move very fast, their mass increases. In heavy atoms like bismuth, the outer electrons in the 6s and 6p orbitals move at about 10% the speed of light. This is so fast that it actually increases their mass, and here's where the key effect happens. A heavier electron has a more tightly bound state, meaning the 6s and 6p orbitals shrink. This pushes the unpaired electrons inward, where they become shielded by the inner electron shells. So the paramagnetic effect weakens, but the diamagnetic effect remains strong. So instead of being weakly attracted to a magnet like we'd expect, bismuth is repelled more strongly than any other naturally occurring element. And the result of this? A magnet floating between two bismuth crystals, a beautiful example of special relativity and quantum mechanics working together. Now before I end, I want to address the fact that throughout this video I've been talking about electrons as if they are actually orbiting like planets. But in reality, electrons exist in orbitals, which are standing wave patterns around the nucleus. Despite this, they still retain angular momentum similar to how a classically orbiting object would. However, we can't define an individual electron's precise orbital angular momentum. Each electron exists in a superposition of possible momentum states until a measurement is made. What we do know is that if two electrons share the same orbital, their total angular momentum must sum to zero when the orbital is full. So the result is the same as if they were orbiting like I explained in this video. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.